This is a pretty comprehensive topic. Full disclosure, I am no expert on uh, climate control systems. And that's what this discussion is actually about, right? So a closer look at climate control as opposed to manual air conditioning. So what's the difference between the two? Uh, without putting too fine of a point on it, you guys are likely well aware that a classical air conditioning system is pretty much, um, I wouldn't go so far as to call it an open loop system, um, but it's kind of a semi open loop system. That is to say that a classical air conditioner, uh, you just go to your, your temperature selection, which is typically not a temperature selection at all. It's either more cool or more hot. What you're basically doing is actually selecting the duct discharge temperature of the air conditioning system, right? That is, there's no wherewithal, there is no feedback in the system for the uh, for the controller, because there isn't one basically in a classical air conditioning system. It's basically discrete control uh, in order to modulate or regulate the cabin temperature, as opposed to a climate control system. A climate control system is a full um, authority, uh, fully fed back, system that is to say it's a closed loop system um, it uses a couple of critical sensors and we'll actually take a look at those in uh, in fact we'll take a look at all the uh, this is the sx4 by the way because i don't know nothing but the sx4 uh we bit about the vitara but mostly uh, the sx4 is the car i'm most familiar with so this is why i'm always showing you this but it's pretty typical for most vehicles guys right uh so we'll look at it and i'm going to do this in two parts this video I'm going to do kind of a, an introduction, um, the component location, and <clears throat> uh, a brief uh, overview of how the system actually operates. And then we'll get into more detail and look at the, uh, um, the schematic in closer detail. I'm going to start with this drawing because there is a lot of components to consider on the schematic. And I think this gives us a bit of a real world view. As I said in part two, we'll do some on-car stuff and we can actually see what this looks like in reality. There is a color coding to this, guys. The color coding that I've, I've actually colored this with is consistent on the schematic. Anything that's blue is an output or an actuator of sort. Uh, anything that is kind of uh, yellowish, the limey yellowish color is uh, highlighting is a sensor of sorts or an input to the system. And uh, anything that is orange is basically a controller of sorts, right? Or a module. We have a couple of uh, relays that we'll see on the uh, schematic, namely the uh, compressor relay and the con uh, condenser fan relay. Uh, those are obviously critical parts of the system. Oh, by the way, I should mention, in fact, I'll do it right now. I'll put it up here. I'm not going to discuss the, uh, um, the fundamentals of air conditioning. There is a, as I said, I'll put it right up here. I've done a video of that in the past. It is uh, discussing air conditioning in general terms. And if you don't understand air conditioning, you shouldn't be watching this video, to be quite frank. It's gonna not really make any sense. Uh, the climate control system is a add-on to a basic air conditioning system. Let's say without the basic air conditioning understanding, uh, you're not really gonna appreciate this. However, you're welcome to stick around in any case, of course. Um, so back to the drawing here, a couple of relays that we'll consider, guys. Uh, the engine coolant temp sensor in the climate control system, as you can imagine, um, it is a critical sensor in the system. Um, would it make sense for the blower speed to come up uh, if you were looking for heat? Obviously, heat energy through the matrix, uh, air going across it, driven by the fan, of course, the blower fan. Would it make sense to turn that on if the engine coolant temperature wasn't up? Mm, I don't think so. So it makes sense that the system needs to know the engine coolant temperature. Down here is the actual graphic of the display. Let me show you that a wee bit closer, boys. All right? The, uh, down here is an actual graphic of the actual uh, end car, uh, the dashboard layout, basically, and the components that are located below that. You can see there's quite a few. We have a sun load sensor. I think you could imagine that um, there's a lot of glass on the SX4, as there is many modern vehicles. and. The intensity of the sunlight can act somewhat like, um, can turn the car in basically into a greenhouse. As you can imagine, the, the radiant heat from the glass can actually uh, elevate the temperatures to an extreme level, actually. So 
the degree of loading on the air conditioning system is in large part a function of how much sunlight is actually coming into the vehicle. So the sun load sensor is there for a reason. Basically um, a photo diode, if you will. We'll look at that in some degree. Um, critical sensor, the cabin air temperature uh, itself. If you look at the instrument panel on most climate control systems, you'll somewhere find a, a little grill, usually typically just little slashes in the, uh, the plastic or the, the panel work somewhere. And typically this is under vacuum of some sort. Some actually use a small electric fan. Um, in the case of the SX4 or most Suzuki product, I think, they actually use an aspirator, which keeps the, uh, the air actually constantly crossing the uh, sensor. As you can imagine, everything has thermal inertia to some degree, right? So if you don't constantly refresh the air actually over there, the response time of the sensor is gonna be very, very low. Wouldn't make sense um, from a, from a control system standpoint where you're trying to actually reach the target temperature uh, as quick as possible so uh, they actually use an aspirator to draw the air over the uh, the cabin temp sensor um, we've got three actuators shown in blue here um, there is a unlike in the manual system where basically you use cables um, to, or cables or, or linkages in order to move the uh, the dampers that are in the uh, distribution plenum itself. In a climate control system, typically they're electric actuators, right? There's a couple different types of actuators that are actually out there. There's stepper motors. Some systems actually are even mechanical. They can use vacuum. In the case of the SX4, it's just a bi-directional DC motor with a potentiometer for feedback purposes, right? And there's three of them. One is the temperature control, used, uh, operates a damper. Another damper is operated as far as the, uh, the air flow control. That is to say, do you want it to, to defrost? Do you, want it to the, uh, do you want it in your face? Or do you want it um, distributed down towards your feet? There's a damper that actually controls the air flow uh, direction, if you will, within the plenum typically described as up, out, or down in uh, air conditioning systems, automotive systems, I think. There's also uh, an intake actuator, which is, uh, th this is the actuator that's located up near the uh, intake scuttle. Um, the base of the windshield, basically, is where the air is typically drawn in on most cars, and it's utilized for fresh and research purposes. More of it that uh, we've got later. The blower it's itself, of course, is shown in blue because it's, basically an actuator, right? It's actually moving the air, obviously. Uh, a motor, of course. So it actually uh, produces the flow through the plenum and it is, um, can be either automatically or manually controlled in the climate control system in the SX4. And it's done through the uh, selector, of course, on the panel. We'll get to that in just a second. But it's also controlled via a blower controller. Another video shows you how that works. It's actually on my Vitara, but it's basically the same system if you want to see that in more detail as well. Basically, you select a target temperature that you want, a set temperature, and the system actually tries to achieve and maintain that set temperature. How do you do it? Well, the set temperature facility or desired temperature is actually set on this control right here on the panel. The panel on the SX4 is not only a control panel, but it's also the HVAC module itself. That is to say, it's, the control circuitry is actually behind this panel. It's not just a panel. There is actually a module and it's an integral part of the panel. So the temp selector actually allows you to set the target temp, if you will, and the system will look at the outside air temperature, the cabin temp sensor, of course. Uh, I don't think we've seen the outside temperature sensor, but I'll show you it shortly because, again, we're moving clockwise through the drawing. It'll uh, basically look at the difference between the inside cabin temperature, what you've set, and actually through the use of the, uh, the fan, the, uh, the dampers, and of course, the AC system itself or the heater matrix itself, that's obviously the source of the heating or cooling in the car, will actually um, modulate everything in order to achieve and maintain your desired temperature. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, moving on for anybody who's still with me here, boys. There's also facility, obviously, to select your fan speed. You can do so manually or the system can actually operate it completely in automatic. In automatic mode, in general terms, the greater the differential between the cabin temperature and the set temperature, the higher the fan speed will be. And that would apply, of course, for heating or cooling. If it's zero degrees in the cabin, which it often is, or even below in Canada, of course, if you want 22 degrees Celsius in the cabin, 
the fan speed will come up and as as the target as the as the differential between the two temperatures becomes if this is the actual and this is your select set temp is the differential actually comes together the fan speed typically will will uh, start to slow down I think that makes me sen makes sense and again as the as a split opens up again between the the target temperature and your set temperature the blower speed will will come back up and of course that's done automatically through the through the controller utilizing the blower blower controller in order to regulate the speed if it's in the automatic position of course you can set it to whatever desired speed you want as well i think there's six or seven speeds so that's uh that's uh, the fan speed uh, selection uh, there's also uh, a fresh or recirc selection that ties in with the intake actuator that I talked about earlier. And there's also a mode selector. Again, this is the up, out, or down distribution of the actual air itself. And I've actually cross-hatched out anything you see on the drawings, the following drawings, boys, that's cross-hatched out actually has to do with the, the rear defrost. So certainly it's a tertiary uh, concern at this point in time with respect to uh, climate control. This is the kick panel. Kick panel is actually uh, at the kick panel, as you can imagine. This is a left hand drive drawing, of course. Uh, the blower motor relay uh, is actually under there, so that's why it's shown in blue again as, a, as an output. Uh, the outside air temperature sensor is, as you can imagine, outside the vehicle, boys, right at the front of the grill. Uh, I've seen you've seen this in one of my videos in the past as well. Uh, when we were looking at the self test facility that this panel actually has. Some of you may recall actually seeing the outside air temp sensor. And uh, as you can imagine, it's critical to know the outside air temp sensor, uh, what the outside air temperature actually is, because what do we need to do? Do we need to, um, are we trying to cool the car? Are we trying to heat the car relative to the outside temperature? Obviously the ductwork uh, uh, baffles, the, uh, the actuators would have to know that in order to actually set them accordingly depending on what the differential actually is and, uh, lastly on this drawing is actually as you can imagine the climate control wants to know what the uh, refrigerant pressure actually is in the system as well again uh, for finite control no resistant no system uh, pressure obviously the system is inoperative and it's not going to function so that's just a brief look at the uh, components boys uh, i know it's a lot of things to actually take in uh, but there's a lot of stuff to actually consider with respect to climate control. Uh, some of you may recognize this drawing uh, again from the basic air conditioning module I actually done. Uh, you can see the condenser uh, shown at the front there, the condenser fan. There's the compressor itself and of course the high and low lines that make their way back into the, uh, the air conditioning plenum. Of course the evaporator is actually housed inside the plenum there. Um, there's the scuttle intake scuttle intake here for uh, um, the fresh and recirc uh, selection. So I know that's a lot of detail to take in. Uh, I hope it's making some sense. We'll move on in the schematic.